Hello and welcome STEM students. Today I wanted to talk to you about playgrounds because both schools that I teach at over the past 10 years have done extensive playground renovations. And at the start of each playground renovation, what we did first is ask the kids, what would you like to see on your dream playground? And then I came across this book. This is My Dream Playground by Kate Becker that I wanted to share with you today because this is a true story about a girl who dreamed that the empty lot across from her house would become a playground for the neighborhood kids one day. And that actually happened. But in the meantime, while she was wishing that this would happen, she was drawing pictures about what she would like to have as her dream playground. So I want you to be thinking about that as you listen to this story. My Dream Playground by Kate Becker. I dream about having a playground, a real playground, a fun playground in our neighborhood. But all we have is an empty lot down the street from my apartment. I know that someday my dream is going to come true. Every day on my way home from school, I walk past the empty lot and then I run up the steps and into our apartment. I grab my pencils, crayons, and sketch pad and then I head back down to the stoop and start to draw. And what I draw is my dream playground. I draw slides and swings and monkey bars and trampolines. I draw my friends and my brothers sliding down the twisty slide, jumping on the trampoline and flying as high as the buildings. I show my drawings to my mom and she hangs them on our fridge. Never stop dreaming, she tells me. Then after dinner, my brothers and I add to my drawings. We use purple for the slide, yellow for the swings, and red for the trampoline. Right now, our drawings are just dreams, but I know that someday they'll come true. Then one day, everything changes. My brothers and I are sitting on our stoop when a man comes by and stops to look at the empty lot across the street. It's him, I say. Who, my brothers ask. The man who's gonna build our playground. He takes out a tape measure and starts measuring and making notes on a clipboard. I run up the steps two at a time into our apartment. I grab my drawings from the fridge and rush back down the stairs. Excuse me, sir, I say to the man. You're here to build the playground, aren't you? He looks surprised at first and then he smiles. Yes, yes I am, he tells me. How did you know? I just knew, I said. I knew you would come. Well, you're right. My name is Daryl and some hardworking volunteers are going to turn this vacant lot into a playground. Can I show you some of my designs? I ask nervously. Designs? For the playground. I always dreamed a playground would get built here. I show him my drawings and he looks them over carefully. And then he says, you are a talented architect. This is an impressive playground design. How would you like to be a project manager? We could use your help. Really? I say. I can be a hardworking volunteer too. Then Daryl and I shake hands. The next day I run home as soon as school is out. Daryl is already at the lot and he hands me my very own clipboard. Here you go, project manager, he says. Daryl asks my opinion on everything. How many slides do we need, he asks. Two, I say. Monkey bars or swings? Both. Then I make more designs on my clipboards and show them to Daryl. Once we've decided on everything, Daryl asks me to make one more drawing, the final design for our new playground, except this one is going to be real and not a dream. After days and weeks and months of being a project manager and planning for my dream playground, the time to build it is finally here. Hundreds of people come to help, including just about everybody I know, plus lots and lots of people I don't know. Mr. Sid from the market brings sandwiches, Ms. Gonzalez from the hardware store brings the tent. Gregory from upstairs is playing music. It's a big party and everyone is working. We cut wood, dig holes, hammer, and paint. When it starts raining, we keep working regardless of the mud. And that's even more fun. It takes a whole week to build everything, but at last we're done. A huge crowd gathers to cheer for us. There's even a TV camera and a reporter interviews me for the news. My name is in the newspaper and so is a picture of our playground.
But the best part of all is playing on the playground that I helped build. My dream playground came true, just like I knew it would. And this is the author's note in the back of the book. Every child should have a great place to play within walking distance. That is what Kaboom believes and why it exists. Kaboom is a national nonprofit that was founded by Daryl Hammond. The hero in this story is inspired by a real girl named Ashley. In 1995, Daryl Hammond moved to Washington, D.C. to plan a service project for volunteers who would be attending a conference. He decided to build a playground and selected Livingston Manor in Washington, D.C. for this project. Daryl planned the project so that the volunteers from outside the community could work side by side with community members. When I was a kid, my elementary school had a summer where it underwent this complete transformation. I remember that we had a big tar area where you could play hopscotch or foursquare or dodgeball. Um, and then there was the swings. We had a set of monkey bars. Um, I think we had a slide. And I think that was it. The rest was just some area of fields. So there wasn't a ton to do on my playground. So one summer when I was about nine or 10 years old, I went home for summer vacation. And then I heard that a lot of work was gonna go on that summer at the playground. So we would drive by it a couple times and it was really cool to watch because a group of um, parents and architects and playground de designers came to our playground and using nothing but telephone poles and used tires, they added a bunch of new things to our playground. So when we came back, we had a log cabin that had two stories to it. And we had a tire swing that was made with this huge, this massive 18 wheeler tire. And if you've never seen one of those up close, they're like almost as tall as you are. So it was really cool. Um, and four people could sit on that swing and be swung around. And then we had this wall of tires. It was a climbing wall. And what they did was they put two poles on the sides and one pole across the top. And it had four tires tall and I think four tires across. And the goal was to see, challenge yourself to see how tall you could climb up this tire wall. And if you could get all the way to the top, could you go over the other side and come back down the other side? So we had some really neat new pieces of equipment that I never would have envisioned because I'd never seen a playground that had a log cabin before or a tire swing before this or um, that climbing wall. Now those things don't exist there anymore. I've been back to my elementary school and they've swapped that equipment out for completely different equipment, but playgrounds do change over time. Every few years you get a new piece of equipment and you might retire an old piece of equipment. So it's kind of fun to see the changes and to be part of that vision where you get to think about what are the changes going to be to this playground. So I want you to do that today. I want you to grab a piece of paper and sketch out what you think would be a really cool thing to add to your playground. And it could be something that you've seen before someplace, or it could be something right from your own imagination that has never been considered before. So use your own creativity and design something that would be part of your dream playground.